chosen as a theme, Arise and Shine. The theme is inspired by Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise and shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Shine, shine, shine. That is the theme. The prophet is still crying into this modern spiritual Israel that we ought to shine. Why? Because the glory of God is risen upon us. God's glory is all around us. Showers of blessing flowing around us. But before we can shine, the prophet is saying that arise, arise. There is a part we ought to play. 
and that is to change the state of our position. And in fact, God willing, I will elaborate more on the theme during the divine service. We need to change the state of our position. The prophet says, this is the time the glory of God is already revealed. All that we ought to do is to arise, take a new position in order to shine. But to kickstart our revival this evening, the Lord has impressed upon my heart to share with you a message, a message that is not coming from my intelligence, a message that is not coming from my PhD thesis, a message coming from the word of God. And it is entitled, what is it about the end time? This question is meant to help all of us here. I am part of it. I am part of the audience. I am just an instrument that God is speaking to all of us. So God wants us to take a retrospection of the main problem about the end time. What is it about it? We have already prayed. There is a proverb in my country that we say, the ocean is very large, full of water. But when it rains, the ocean receives its share. We have prayed all right, but too much prayer is power. So I want to invite you to bow down your head as you humble your heart and let's seek the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your church. I thank you for the pastor and the leadership. I thank you for the children who are on this platform. I thank you for the youth. I thank you for the adults. We are here because you love us and through the death of Jesus Christ, you have adopted us as sons and daughters of yours. Father, you have a message for your people. May this message sanctify our conscience and our hearts. May you identify all thy power with our meeting tonight. Let us hear you minister unto us. Speak into our lives. Speak to our brokenness. Help us to understand that thy word is powerful and thy word can set us free. We thank you, dear Lord, that you are always with us. May you dispatch the Holy Spirit to abide with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. My dear friend, so my question to you this evening is simple. What is it about the end time? Now, in tonight's presentation, we have three main objectives. The first one is to arouse your sense of awareness to the times, the times that we live in. I'm not talking about the time of Abraham or Moses or the time of James White, Ellen White, and Uriah Smith. I am talking about this time of COVID-19. Our age, our technological age, are we aware of what is happening around us? The second objective that I want us to know is to remind you that idleness, or let, let me put it in quotation marks, lazy Adventism is a sign of spiritual laxity. There is a crisis around us and our irresponsiveness to the call and our irresponsibility to missions are a suicide. It is a suicide to our own selves and the people around us. And the third objective 
is to know whether you are a key player for or against the kingdom of God. Just to know whether we are key players in the kingdom of God. Are we on the side of God? Or we have an attitude that is a direct opposite of our faith. So these are the three main objectives that by the end of tonight's presentation, we would have to take home. My friend, the question is, what is it about the end time? Let me tell um, you this right up by one of, one of the Irish poets and a political activist. Since you are in the UK, I chose to uh, choose some names that you would be familiar with. George Bernard Shaw, he once said, the power of accurate observation is frequently called cynicism by those who don't have it. In this quote, when I saw it, what arrested my attention was the phrase, the power of accurate observation. We are living in a special time, but God's children, do we have the power of accurate observation about what is happening? I read an article from um, the website of Royal Bank of Canada, and the caption of the article was powers of observation. And the article begins with this statement. The mass of people take little notice of what's going on around them. They don't know what they are missing by not observing more consciously. Friends, these are secular write up calling people's attention to accurate observation, being conscious of observing the things around you. And some of these things, they crave our awareness to the fact that we shouldn't be careless. Even in the church, we need to open our eyes and observe things within. Do you know that sometimes we often fail to critically observe even those we worship with? Sometimes you find somebody becoming inactive, 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 and the person is backsliding, but we fail to notice it. We have people with financial difficulties, especially during this COVID-19. Have we been able to observe the church members and to know that somebody is suffering, not from the COVID-19, but from financial COVID-19? Those who are bereaved, those who are agitated because of singleness, dysfunctional marriages, all these things are in the church. Do we have the power of observing to attend and minister to these people? But my friends, tonight I'm not talking about what is happening in the church. And I'm not deviating from the question. The question is, what is it about the end time? Do we have the power of accurate observation? In this same article written by the Bank of Canada, the author said something. And the author said, in the broad field of life, people would observe more if they would only watch more deliberately what is going on before their very eyes. 
Are we observing and watching what is going on before our very eyes? Church, the question is, what is it about the end time? When we talk of the end time as Adventism, it, as Adventist, it's a mantra. Because we proclaim the coming of Jesus Christ. And that is directly linked to the end time. But the question is, what is it? What is the problem with the end time? Now, I am not preaching about novelists and philosophers and politicians and social activists. In fact, the Bible itself is the first book that taught us to be critical and to be observant. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, he emphasized it over and over and over and over again, the necessity to be an observer, watching the times. In fact, he warned against sluggish life. Living your life carelessly. Let us eat and drink tomorrow. We are gone. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, Watch therefore. Watch therefore. For you know not what hour your Lord comes. Matthew chapter 25, verse 13, Jesus repeated again. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Chapter 24, chapter 25, chapter 26, Jesus is going to repeat the same thing. Matthew 26, verse 41. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Watch, watch, watch. Jesus is craving our awareness to the times that we shouldn't be careless. We should watch. We must have an accurate sense of observation. Mark also reported some of these statements of Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 13, verse 33. The Bible says, take heed. Watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Mark chapter 13, the same chapter, verse 35. Jesus says, therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come. Whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. Watch. Luke chapter 12, verse 37. Our Lord Jesus said, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Praise God. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of God. Watch. The power of accurate observation was given to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch. The apostles also continued to warn the churches. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Watch ye. Stand fast. That is the counsel of the Apostle Paul. He continued in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, watching and praying, persevering with supplication. 
First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6. Therefore, let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. First, the Bible continuously warn us to watch, to have that kind of sense of observation, being careful of the times. First Peter chapter four, verse seven. By the time of all things is at hand, be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Friends, every seven day Adventist is made a watcher of the times. We must keep watching before we can warn the world. But the question is, what is it about the end time that we should watch? What is it? Is it, is it about natural disasters? Is it about climate crisis? Is it about trade wars? Is it about social unrest? Is it about a culture of sexual fantasies? Is it about political unrest? Is it about the papacy? Is it about the collapse of churches around us? You can name them a whole bunch of end time ringing bells and poking events. You can name them. These uninterrupted events, my dear friend, can be a distraction from the real issue, the real issues of the end time. Earthquakes will continue until the end of the world. Popes will rise and fall until the time of the end. And the sad news is some of us, we may not even see a Pope face to face before we die. So what is it about the end time that the Bible talks that we should watch and pray? We should watch, we should watch, we should have the power of accurate observation. Friends, let the Bible speak to us. When the Bible speaks, then everything will be clear. Then for me to speak from my mind. And before we go into the Bible once again, let me remind you that the Bible always speaks to us from a future perspective. And that is why it is a prophetic book and different from all other literature books. And that is why we can also trust in these oracles of the almighty God. Because in the Bible, God unfolds the future to you and I. We don't need psyches. We need the Holy Spirit to open our eyes through God's word. Now, I want you to take your Bibles. Let us open to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. I, it is a text we have read and read and read, but I want you to pay particular attention for us to understand what is the real issue about the end time. 2 Peter, I mean, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. The Bible says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. In the last days, there shall be troublous moments. Why? The Bible says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despises of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Friends, I want you to draw your attention to something. 
that the end time will be a perilous moment. It will be dangerous moment. But the Bible says, it is going to be like that because of the sins of humanity. The problem with the end time is about man. Man who loves himself. Man who has become so covetous. Man who boasts, who is proud, who blasphemes. It is about humanity. Lovers of selves, self-seeking instead of self-giving. And there is an abject poverty of commitment everywhere. In marriages, in churches, people are self-seeking. So we have divorces over divorces over divorces. In the church, we, have, we are so self-seeking. We want our way. If it, if it is not our way, then nothing happens. Sometimes God's, God's work is affected by some of these attitudes. Covetousness, uncontrollable desire after the attraction of the world. The urge to become, the urge to be Instead of being like Christ, we want to be, we want to build, we want to do that. Boasters, excessive pride in one's achievements, possession, and abilities. We talk of money, we talk of the economy, America first, and all that. Pride and attitude of holier than thou. I am better than you. Friends, these are the Christian version of pride, holier than thou. The Bible also talks about truth breakers, persons who readily promises, but sooner they betray you. You confide your secret, your pains in somebody and the next day it is on the front page. A lot of divorces are as a result of breaking the marital covenant. False accusers saying things that you have not witnessed with your own eyes. Incontinent, lack of self-control. Fierce aggressiveness. Instead of the fruit of the spirit and gentleness, we have become so fierce. Despises of those that are good. An attitude of Cain who killed his brother because his own works were evil and that of his brother was good. And sometimes we despise people who are calling our attention to the right path. That this is the way of the Lord. Walk in it. Those people we hate them and we call them names. You are a fundamentalist. You are too conservative. You are too that. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Misguided passion for self-satisfaction. In pleasure, discotheque, concerts, unnecessary amusements, sports, etc. Now, our social media pages can host all the jokes, all the fashion designs, and everything except Christ Jesus. I was telling somebody that, have you noticed that the name Jesus Christ is going down? I don't hear people proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. Go to the internet. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That is a form of Christianity without Christian virtue. You profess to be a Christian, but no virtues. There is no experience of salvation. We become hypocrites. Friends, the end time is a crisis of humankind. Look no further 
The signs can be there. The earthquakes can be there. Whatever they want to do, they can do. The COVID-19, we will have COVID-21 or COVID-31. They will continue to come. But the real problem is with mankind, who is evil. Perilous times are not about events, but Satan's attempt to undermine God's redemptive intentions for mankind. When the Bible says, watch, it means be careful or wake up. Not just observing events, of course, but Jesus is trying to tell us that be vigilant. Be a vigilant obs observant and how best you can put your faith into practice. You must live above certain standards of the world and looking onto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Friends, it was not Jordan, the river Jordan, that killed about 25,000 people. And only two people who started a journey got to the promised land. It wasn't river Jordan. It was sin. Sin. Which became an impediment for many people to walk on the promised land. And this is the same thing happening in these last days. The events can be scary, all right, but Christian Adventists, let us focus on humanity. What message do we give to humanity? Because the intention of these things is to undermine God, God's redemptive plan of salvation for humankind. Because people have become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Friends, the problem of the beginning in the Garden of Eden was the fall of man. The flood came. The flood wasn't the problem, but the problem that appalled our Father in heaven was the sin of humanity. It is always the sin of humanity that precipitates some of these catastrophic events. The problem has always been with man. The Son of Man died, not because there were earthquakes or because there were some kind of pestilences, but because of the pestilence of sin in humanity. That's why the Son of Man came to die. And the end of the world will also be as a result of the fall of mankind. What is it about the end time? I'm bringing my sermon to an end. I want to remind you something in the Bible. This ancient city, which was called Sardis, was an exceptionally fortified city. In fact, it should have been nearly impossible to overtake that city by any military regiment. And yet, not once, but twice, the city was overtaken because the watchmen were sleeping on the job. The city's enemies, they would send someone to climb up the city's walls and open the door to let the army in. Or throughout all these exercises, the watchmen are snore, snoring. They are sleeping on the job. The city was also captured on another occasion by Alexander the Great, simply because the people were afraid to face Alexander even though they had what should have been an impenetrable fortress to withstand and to fight back. And Jesus' message to the church of Sardis brings to view this historical episode. He cautions them to wake up in Revelation chapter 3, verses 2 to 3. Jesus said to the church, wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, 
I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. So my friend, what is it about the end time? Arise, arise, arise and shine. What means you must take a new position of yourself. Be ye watchful and be careful that you don't become proud, lovers of pleasure. You don't become high-minded, self-seeking. That has always been the problem with mankind. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 13. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. It's time to shine, my dear friend. It's time to wake up. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Arise and shine. What is it about the end time? Is it about you? It is about me. It is about the souls that are dying. This world, God created it to be good, to be nice. And in fact, the book of Genesis says it was very, very good, all that God created. But because of the sin of mankind, death and chaos took over the harmony that God established. And in the end time, Satan is exploiting the weakness of humanity to send many souls to hell. And when we hear end time, end time, end time, what we ought to do, according to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is to take our positions, to arise and to shine and to preach, preaching of repentance for people to escape the destruction that is ahead of us. May the Lord bless you, my dear friend. I believe that you have heard God ministering unto you. I believe that you have understood what ought to be done at this time. In the streets, we see people sleeping alongside the road. Not that they are homeless, but the night before they drank and they couldn't find their way home. We see our youth going wayward. We see people cursing God. We see people pushing an agenda which is an affront to the almighty God. Our humanity has been under attack. We see them, we hear them in the news. What do we ought to do? Is to stand up and preach a message of repentance and declare to the people that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is coming again. May this be your prayer. May this be our hope. And may this be our song that we would understand the times and take our positions. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you tonight for such a wonderful message. Indeed, we are living in a very perilous time. Darkness is all over us. We have been stricken to the core of this COVID-19. And sometimes we question, where are you, our God? But we know that you have always been with us. Satan is seeking every opportunity, rolling like a lion to destroy humanity. But you have given us a ministry of salvation a ministry to send 
this awesome gospel to the ends of the world. Preaching to the world that our Lord and Jesus Christ will soon come again. Father, may we take our positions. May we have this sense of awareness of the times and to preach repentance to the world. We believe that thy spirit is with us. And may you be with us even throughout this weekend and minister to us in a special way. This is our humble prayer. This is our humble request. May you bless my dear brothers and sisters, our children who are here tonight. May you touch them in a special way. May you pour thy Holy Spirit upon them, dear Lord. May you strengthen them, take captive of their minds, protect them from this corrupt, world and help them to fear you and grow in wisdom and in faith. We thank you. We bless thy holy name because we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh, 